based on open public debate and uh, you know and campaigning in local constituents and door to door and all of the rest of it that makes up the, how Irish politics w- works on the ground, the, the the you know ground hurling game of it, right? And um, uh, and that's what makes it so interesting and 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 so powerful as it could be. But say that were to happen, what type of economic taxation model <coughs> would you see? Would would you see something emerging that's different from there, from from that's there already? How what would you change? Well, well, firstly, I mean. I- I don't believe, and I don't know how we ever got into a situation where the government, and this is right throughout the world, can dictate how much of your money that you earn you can keep. Um, I think we need to move away from the dual taxation system we have, where we have both spending and income taxes. Let's have one or the other, you know. Um, and we, we listen to, you know, uh, people talking about some of the, the left wing politicians talking about income tax and that and that some people below certain levels don't pay any tax everybody in this country pays tax if i go and buy a bar of chocolate or mm. my, ch- if a, if my grandchild mm. goes and buys a bar of chocolate 23 mm. percent of that is VAT. Mm. that's tax if you look at a liter of petrol i think 68 percent of that is tax mm. you know everywhere we go and i mean some economists should actually sit down and work out how much of your income actually goes to buy a product mm. and you will find it something like probably five percent or something because there's tax after tax and you know the, the, the whole basis of taxation in the first place was part of the social contract mm. you take some of our money and you provide us with what we need mm. whether that's schools which they fail to do i mean there are children with special needs who can't get a school place mm. provide you with health care you can't get to see a doctor. We don't have enough hospitals. Look at the fiasco and the disaster that is Limerick Hospital, mainly because they closed down hospitals in Clare and uh, some other one, and it's so overcrowded. And the staff there, and we saw the, the, the report into Limerick there last week, and while there's obviously failings between uh, the, at the staff level in that particular case, the overriding problem is the management of the hospitals. And it's not simply a matter of banging another billion in. And remember, Simon Harris was Minister for Health. Michal Martin was Minister for Health. Leo Varadkar was Minister for Health. And almost every Taoiseach that we have had in recent times has been Minister for Health. I think the only one who wasn't was Bertie Ahern. And, you know, it seems to me incredible that all of these ministers have failed to solve the department that they were in. And instead of being kicked out, they get promoted. Mm. You know, there's something fundamentally wrong. But isn't that, that happening throughout the public service uh, levels? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There are no consequences <clears throat> for uh, for whether you're whether you're a star performer or whether you're an underperformer. There's just no consequences. No, when we Positive look at or negative. The, the, this week's events, mm. three hundred and thirty thousand for a bike shed mm. that all of the political parties signed off on, despite their jumping up and down, mm. and not one of them asked how much is it. You know, my grandchild went into the shop yesterday and was, said to the man, how much is that bar of chocolate? He didn't say, just give it to me and take the money out of my pocket. Mm. A child at six will ask how much something is. Nobody that's listening to this uh, podcast would buy anything without asking the price. Yet these people signed off on it. And then we don't know who authorised it. Mm. We have 1.4 million and it's, people call it a bike shed. It's not even as big as a bus shelter. You know, it's like a canopy outside your back door. Mm. You know, a shed has walls and sides. Mm. And then we have the security hut, which is a bit of glass with a copper roof. One and a half million. Like, it's a bit like Charlie Fitz said, you know, when somebody goes into him, went into him for a loan in the bank he was running. I can't remember. It was Anglo. 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 Yeah. Anglo. Um, how much do you want? I should just stick another zero on. You know, like it's that mentality hasn't changed.